I think organizing code is is a very important part of writing code. When you when you write code, you're not just looking to get it to work. You're also looking to have it be maintainable. I, I forget who it is that said anybody can write code that a machine can run, but it's only a skilled programmer who can write code that other human beings can understand, right? So I think a big part of writing code is to make sure that your colleagues or perhaps even your future self can look at that code and try and understand what's going on is the first thing. And also try and make the process of modifying that code simpler. So uh, code never lives as, you know, as something that's written in stone. It's constantly evolving, constantly changing. One of the things that's very different in the software engineering principle, as opposed to something like a, a civil engineering principle, you build a bridge. The bridge is not going to constantly change and evolve over time, right? You could probably add attachments, remove attachments, but with software engineering, we end up tearing down large structures and it's like, you know, it's, it's expected to be that way. So as a result, every time we write code, we have to be mindful of the fact that this code is going to be transformed. It's going to be evolved. It's going to be changed over time and make that process. Whoever is doing that, make it easy for them to do it. So there are a bunch of principles that have been evolved over time in order to make that uh, simple. And we call them best practices. We call them, you know, we even bake it into the language and say for something like object-oriented programming, that's one way of organizing code. So, you know, there are the various complex schools of thought. So it goes from something as simple as hey, these two pieces of code belong together, put them together to these whole sciences say, like object-oriented programming and various other related concepts like that. So yeah, I think organizing code is super important. There isn't like a, a fixed list that I would look for. There are a few obvious ones, which is a repetition of code is like an immediate thing that screams out like, you know, okay, this needs organization. We have the same piece of code that's put in multiple different places. You want to extract that out into a, a separate method or a separate class or a separate file, depending on the language you're using. Why is that? Again, it does ha it has n probably very little material impact to the present, but again, we are talking about future changes. Like if that piece of code has to change, imagine if that were to be in multiple different places, then they have to go change all of them, right? That's, that's the reason why we don't, we say duplication is bad not because it affects us today. It will affect us tomorrow when we have to change the thing that is duplicated. So wherever you have such kind of duplication, the first immediate thing that comes to mind is extracted our, put it into a, a shared method or a shared class and have this refer to that, it makes it easy to change later. The other thing that comes to mind is good practices depending on what kind of programming style you're using. So for object-oriented programming, uh, there are a set of uh, patterns that you follow, like uh, we follow a uh, single responsibility uh, principle for a certain object or methods in an uh, in a class. We follow encapsulation principles to make sure that every uh, class has a certain contract and it's not exposing more than it needs to, right? So what is it that the consumer needs? It's almost as if you treat each class as kind of like an, an API that external, someone external to the class is calling. Even if it's just you, you're writing that class, that doesn't matter. It's still an API. It's like, what should that consumer know? What needs to be protected? What needs to be uh, private? What needs to be public, right? With functional programming, again, you have patterns around it. So for example, immutability is an important pattern. When you're doing functional programming, you want to make sure that the functions are pure functions. Again, what's the point? It doesn't affect us today. But if you have an external state and you're doing functional programming and your functions have a side effect, you move that function somewhere else, something is going to break because the external setting is not exactly what uh, the function needs. So functional programming, we talk about pure functions, avoiding side effects and so on. So depending on the type of programming style you have, uh, you have different uh, patterns that are pretty much well established as best practices. Those are some things that I would, I would explore next. And from there it goes on. These are things that it's like, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing it's hard for me to kind of list down, okay, I'm going to check this, 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 and this, because these are things that, you know, all developers kind of acquire over time, over years of experience. So it's not like we go through this laundry list and then memorize it and then apply it. A lot of it comes from experience, but there's a lot of patterns that repeat. You just do them over and over again and kind of become second nature.